Hello, I'm Steve Knutson, a Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services. And in this video, I thought I'll take my controlled document system, which I've been building over a series of videos, uh, which you can watch on my channel, and um, I'll add a Power App to it to allow end users who might be uh, need read access to my controlled documents, say, in a manufacturing environment or out in the or field based, um, where they just need to view the documents but not edit them. So what I've done is I've used my published documents library as a data source and I've created this little Power App. So let's just give it a quick demo and then I'll show you how it works on the home page of my site. I've just added a button. And if we go to there, I'm going to launch the app from this button here. We'll just go through a quick demo and then we'll uh, go into actually how I built it. So the first thing you'll um, see here is a file um, gallery on the left hand side where I can pick my items. On the right hand side I've got a PDF document viewer. Now actually in my library all my documents are actually in Word format. Um, Power Apps has a control for displaying PDF files but doesn't have a control for displaying Word documents. So when I show the app I'll show a little trick that I learned thanks to uh, Matthew Devaney. So um, over here I can click down and choose different documents and sort of see the content on the right hand side and you'll see it performs reasonably well. Um, I've also got search and so I can search here both by the, um, uh, by the uh, parts of the names of the documents. So for example if I type in um, ENG it will bring back my engineering documents on the side here. Um, now uh, that's really cool. Um, and um, makes it nice and easy to view them and I can scroll up and down you'll see it renders them perfectly and so let's have a look at how this has been built so I'm just going to go to my Power App Studio and over in here I've created a Power App where I've added the document library my published library as a data source so if I go and look at my data on my app you'll see I've got my published document site here um, and just connected to that one library and then what I've done is I've just used a template which has got a nice layout with a one-third left-hand, two-third right-hand sort of size section and a top section up here. Within the Power App, I've got a gallery. Uh, this gallery here, if I'm just going to choose the gallery, um, I've put into here a little uh, thing. We've got the items, so that's the items that are displaying in the gallery. I'm using a search from this text box up here, so I'm searching my published documents library where the input text from this text box here matches one of these fields, the title field or the name field. Um, and I've just noticed that I've got a newer version of this document that I haven't published. So what I might do is publish that in the background just while we're waiting and I'll go back and show you um, a slight difference that I have there. Okay, the next thing that I've done is on the right hand side in the um, PDF control here, I've used this little function here on the document setting uh, substitute the gallery item that I've selected on this side. I'm going to get the thumbnail and then I'm going to convert that thumbnail to PDF. So it generates basically a PDF of the Word document on the fly. This also works for other document types like um, Excel and, and uh, PowerPoint as well. Um, so that's what's doing the rendering. So it's quite a simple process. And then all it is is the item that I'm selected here is displayed in this field here. So a nice, um, simple Power App but suitable for working on a iPad type device or Android tablet, um, or also in a web browser sense as well, making it nice and easy for our users. So I've just published that version, but let's run it and see the version that I have here is slightly different and that I had the control document number down in here. So if we just go back over to our library, you'll see that I've got in here a um, Document library has both has, has documents that are using a numbering system. So you'll see this numbering system here, as well as a title here. So these are the two fields that are being displayed in my app. And then I'm displaying what type of document it is. So I've set the search up so that if I go something like ENG, it will find the engineering items, including this one here, which has got called confined space, which has um, ENG in, these, in the name of the SOP. Um, I can also put in a, a directly a full number. So if I went um, ENGCL001, it'll take me direct to the checklist. One little thing which I'm working on is this here. I need to select the PDF before it displays. Um, 
uh, or the document for it displays, but um, you can you get the idea. Um, so that's my super simple demo. Now that I've published that back to um, by having that publish button before, it should have also updated over here. So let's close that, go back to home, and let's reopen it again. And we'll probably get a wee message when we do that. So let's just go there. It's going to open the latest version of this Power App. You'll see it says there's a newer version, so I'm just going to go refresh. It's going to pop up, and it's probably just going to ask me. No, no, no problem at all. But you'll see, again, now I can just sort of browse my way down. One of the limitations of Power Apps is the number of items that can be brought into a gallery view. Um, this is limited to 500 items uh, by default. Uh, you can extend this, but of course, the more you bring in, the slower that initial opening screen will be. So it's a good idea to put some filtering on there. Uh, so for example, you might want it to open uh, documents based on the department that the person is in or the, or the functional area, just to limit um, the amount of time it takes to load. Um, could be two or three seconds, or it could be a little bit longer if it's if it's um, you know significant number of documents, or if you're working over a low speed data link somewhere um, out in the field. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I will um, post the details of how to build this onto my blog also. Um, so thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.